Now in the next question that is question 28 as it reads a potentiometer circuit has been set up for finding the internal resistance of a given cell. There is a very standard formula and based on that this question has been asked. Too much of unnecessary data has been given just to confuse you. You see it says that main battery used across the potentiometer wire has an EMF of 2 volt and negligible inter resistance. This is immaterial to me. The potentiometer wire itself is 4 meter long that also is immaterial to me. When the resistance are connected across the given cell, now this comes the data, given cell has values of infinity and 9.5 ohm. There are two instances for which the values of R has been adjusted. The balancing lengths on the potentiometer wire are found to be 3 meter and 2.85 meter. This is the data you are expected to use. If you go by the standard formula for internal resistance, it is simply L1 by L2 minus 1 into R. This is the standard formula and one and only formula for finding out the internal resistance of a cell. You have to find out small r. Now you see the larger length happens to be L1 that has been given to you here 3 meter and the smaller length L2 that is equal to 2.85 that has been given to you and this capital R is nothing but this 9.5 ohm that has been given. Rest of the data that is immaterial. If you solve it then you will find that you are getting the value 0 0.5 ohm. The answer to this question will be the option number 3 if you solve this thing with the help of this data and that explains question number 28. Now let us discuss the next question that is question number 29. Now in the next question that is question 29 it reads following figures show the arrangement of a bar magnets in different configurations. You have been given these diagrams. Each magnet has magnetic dipole moment M. Now, which configuration has highest net magnetic dipole moment? You see, magnetic moment is a vector quantity and here you are expected to find out the resultant of two vectors. If I write down the resultant of two vectors, you see A square plus B square plus 2AB cos theta, whatever formula you use, that I am using for M. A square means M square here, M square plus M square plus 2M square cos theta under root. Now this theta value will be deciding, you understand, theta value will be deciding which one has largest value. Here the angle between these two moments that is 180 degree, here it is 90 degree, here you have 30 degree and here you have 60 degree. So the value if theta is very low then the cos theta value will be high and the value of net moment will also be large. So I will be choosing option number this one that is third option which is having lowest angle that is 30 degree and that will make maximum dipole moment. That is the answer to question number 29. Now let me explain the next question that is question number 30. Now in the next question that is question 30, it says in an ammeter 0.2 percent of main current passes through the galvanometer. That means it is a question in which galvanometer has been con converted into an ammeter. Now the resistance of galvanometer has been given to be equal to capital G. If you look at the solution to this question, you can say galvanometer is there, there must have been a shunt and the overall thing that has become an ammeter. Now see, it is saying that 0.2 percent of the current is passing here. If 100 percent current is coming here, this entire thing is an ammeter then only 0.2 percent current is passing at this place. That means the rest of the current is passing through this particular shunt and now this question is demanding what is the resistance of the ammeter, you understand, resistance of the ammeter has been demanded. Now see whatever is the potential drop here 0.2 into G that will be the you can say 0.2 into G this is equal to 100 percent that is 100 percent of the current passing through the resistance of the ammeter which you are supposed to calculate into that. So if you solve this thing resistance of the ammeter, mind you they have not demanded resistance of the shunt. Another option you see this first option that is for that, that is wrong option, you, are, you have G upon 500, this will be the resistance of the entire ammeter which has been demanded. So I will be marking answer 3 for this particular question and that explains question number 30. Now let us discuss the next question that is question 31.